Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Alaska Pipeline Service Company, Alaska's pipeline to the future, delivering oil today, sustaining operations for tomorrow, committed to safety, operating the 800-mile Trans-Alaska Pipeline since 1977. The National Weather Service. Hello everyone and thanks again for joining us for another live edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service and I'll be hosting tonight's show. Again, uh, just a reminder of the uh, Alaska statewide test of the tsunami warning system that's going to take place uh, Thursday again at 10.15 a.m. And uh, more information, uh, take a look at the website there and you can also find out about the uh, Alaska Shakeout. And for the satellite imagery, the GOES uh, shots here put together to form a kind of a time lapse. A lot of clear skies here over the southeast coast. Had a little bit of moisture, mostly off into Canada there. And uh, look like some variable clouds in the interior. Cirrus dropping down, big area high pressure right here. Clockwise flow uh, circulating that moisture that some of that's breaking off coming up from the uh, western Pacific there going over the top. and really not doing much of anything here. A little bit of light snow off over toward McKenzie River Delta and on into the Northwest Territories, but uh, just clear skies again along the Arctic coast. Uh, VFR anyway, most areas, just about all areas throughout the day. And this just high level stuff that uh, vanishes as it comes around there, it kind of drops into the Northeast and then disappears. Clear skies from the Gulf of Alaska. In fact, all of the Gulf of Alaska here under clear skies. You don't pick up the clouds until you get over here toward Kodiak Island. Pretty cloudy day there along in the east side of the island, but breaking out on the west side in toward Chillicoff Strait. Then you pick up some more clouds, but not a bad day there over Bristol Bay. And uh, some moisture here associated with an upper level trough and then a front that came in from the west out there. You can see uh, this moisture here with some uh, widely scattered rain and snow showers uh, in it uh, with an upper trough and then this front linking up with it as it pushed eastward there and uh, high pressure keeping it back to the west there and then another front coming across this the cold front uh, just almost merging in with a whole uh, mess there and what we'll have is a, a front that will do a slow dissolve out here along the coast over the next couple of days uh, pretty good winds this afternoon with that, up to uh, 50 miles an hour. Actually, earlier this morning, Cape Newenham gusts to upwards of 50 miles an hour. And a little bit of light rain uh, on Alaska on in toward Cold Bay, occasional rain today. But breaking out behind it, snow showers moving into the Shimia area. And uh, pretty light winds most locations here. Uh, kind of brisk down here, 15 to 25 miles an hour, gusts to 35 miles an hour. Uh, with this system, but much lighter up toward the Perbolovs, a little bit of snow there, but nothing much. And the winds only at about 10 to 20 miles an hour from the southeast. A little brisker here, cutting across northern Bristol Bay. Uh, Dillingham seeing north winds gusting upwards of 15 to 30 miles an hour, as well as areas back up toward Kaliganik. And looking at the uh, chart today, huge area high pressure centered now over the Northwest Territories, but still extending a, a ridge westward there right across the Chukchi Sea and into the Russian Far East. But uh, down here, the wind flow changing over the last couple of days as these uh, dying fronts move in. Uh, again, the southeast winds, more of a gradient here, so we had the gustier wind conditions from Bristol Bay right up along the coast there and also out in advance of that front uh, that pushed into the uh, first across the eastern Aleutians and in toward the Alaska Peninsula. 
but it mounts pretty light there. And then the clouds of Kodiak, clear skies all the way across the Gulf of Alaska into the Panhandle. Uh, maybe a little cloudiness down here, mostly over Dixon entrance, just uh, clipping the southern areas there. There's an X system that will be uh, mostly slowly moving its way eastward, but uh, the flow around that will eventually kick more moisture up. In fact, there's a chance of rain, rain and snow mixed, uh, depending on your elevation over the southern southeast coast tonight there as that uh, moves in, but it doesn't look like it'll get too far to the north. Uh, winds will stay pretty gusty here over the northern inside water areas. Uh, about like they were today, look for a gradual increase in the winds here, maybe late tonight, but that won't kick in until tomorrow with uh, strong high pressure sitting over the Yukon, lower pressure down here to the south. Uh, that's expected to uh, start to increase the winds, uh, mostly tomorrow and tomorrow afternoon. Otherwise, no change over the interior, really from the uh, North Gulf Coast here, all the way up into the Arctic, staying clear and uh, pretty light wind-wise. It could be some breezy conditions here over the central interior uh, along the higher elevations, but uh, still this uh, weather system out here, mostly staying along and off the coast, mostly staying off the coast, uh, although uh, just kind of grazing it from Nunavak Island with a chance of some light snow conditions and variable cloudiness back up towards St. Lawrence Island. And uh, no change really, mostly cloudy, a little moisture there for the Alaska Peninsula of the uh, rain or snow variety. Quite light, same thing for the eastern Aleutians, that cold front weakening right across the area. Uh, both fronts are becoming quite weak in this zone here as most of the moisture with the winds take off to the northwest. But quite a few snow showers, actually pretty isolated to scattered, uh, say around the adak atka area, get a little more frequent and numerous as you get out towards Shimia. Otherwise, for the southeast coast, again, some rain and snow moving in late tonight. Uh, fair conditions, that cloudiness and flurries will stay in Canada. And then for tomorrow, uh, low pressure still southwest of the Queen Charlotte Islands, but that flow trying to circulate some moisture uh, northwestward into the area. So a chance of rain here over the southern areas, mostly uh, Cloac, Craig, over to uh, Ketchikan, on down to Annette, Heidelberg in those areas. Nothing to the north, mostly clear skies. Maybe just a few variable clouds moving through the central areas here, but the northeast winds uh, expected to increase with gusts to 60 miles an hour by tomorrow afternoon, or during the afternoon tomorrow. In fact, there's a wind warning out for that wind, <coughs> excuse me, uh, increasing to uh, 60 miles an hour that begins at 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. That'll go through tomorrow night, gradually increasing, gusts to 70 miles an hour tomorrow night here, mostly in the Juneau area, Juneau Douglas area, as well as Taku Inlet, and expecting uh, from the statement I read, gusts to 80 miles an hour possible in all of those areas during the morning hours on Tuesday. Uh, so a pretty windy uh, stretch coming up, at least for the next couple of days there, but it'll be dry and that'll help keep most of the moisture down here to the south, especially with the eastward track of this storm system there, as opposed to if it was going to roll right up the coastline. But again, uh, no change over the interior, just some variable cloudiness, mostly of the cirrus variety here, catching the eastern interior areas. Uh, might start picking up a little bit of a east-southeast wind over the eastern Alaska range, places like uh, Delta Junction. They usually get that in this type of a pattern as higher pressure pulls over into the Yukon, a little bit of a lower pressure, but not much here over south-central Alaska. Otherwise, uh, another center up there off the uh, Arctic coast uh, is going to keep uh, associated with the upper ridge, keeping uh, conditions sunny and dry, and uh, this weather pattern will be held off the coast for the most part, except for maybe Nunavak Island. Minimal effects, but a lot less wind in these areas tomorrow than what you saw today, uh, especially Cape Newenham. Still a chance of some moisture, variable clouds here, occasional hit and miss rain or snow showers there over the Alaska Peninsula, maybe on Alaska, that kind of edging its way eastward and the whole thing dissipating. So look for skies to clear out uh, first at Nikolsky, and that may show up in the uh, Dutch Harbor on Alaska areas later on. Another uh, trough out here, a couple of squall lines. Well, wouldn't really call them squall lines, but the winds could kick up to small craft advisory levels, 25 or 30 knots, especially with this one here as it swings eastward across the Aleutians tomorrow. Some snow showers and then uh, chillier temperatures, snow showers, brisk southwest winds, 15 to 25 there, all the way out to Shimia. And for the Tuesday outlook, uh, You'll see that system again making a push eastward there. 
So just uh, moisture starting to retreat, whatever gets northward tomorrow night will start to edge its way back off uh, to the southeast. Clear skies and the strong winds expected uh, up over the northern inner channels here. Again, the high wind warning extending at this point until 4 p.m. Tuesday with the strongest winds likely again Tuesday morning. Could see gusts 80 miles an hour. That's what's currently in the forecast. And uh, still possible breezes here over the eastern Alaska range, but nothing uh, nearly as strong as what they're forecasting for the northern panhandle. Uh, light wind conditions, light variable winds, Prince William Sound, Cook Inlet, with nothing but sunshine here for much of the North Gulf Coast. Kind of threw some clouds up in there, but should be hopefully sunny with that wind direction going from the easterly you saw today that pulled the clouds right into Kodiak on the east side there and kept it socked in uh, with the clouds. That'll go. Uh, Actually, that start clearing out some probably tomorrow and hopefully just sunny skies with light northwesterlies 10 to 20 on uh, Tuesday and then some variable cloudiness. This is all that's left of that remnant front there. Still some flurries maybe along the Yukon Delta coast. A little more likely though up across St. Lawrence Island, but uh, no wind associated with this at all. Very light gradient out here now. High pressure over the Alaska Peninsula for very light winds, variable clouds. Partly sunny skies for the eastern Aleutians. Risk of a shower there for the Perlos association with this weak low center and trough. And then a little bit uh, stronger one out here. Could bring uh, some possibilities of uh, snow showers into the ADAC area. And that'll extend again out to the west. But all of this uh, snow shower condition is mostly staying out to the west. There's high pressure aloft holds over the interior. And temperatures this afternoon, not bad over the, south, uh, over the panhandle. Temperatures in the uh, lower to mid 40s here, uh, the entire stretch of the way. 42 up at Cordova, otherwise upper 30s to near or into the lower 40s across most of south central Alaska. Lower 40s there for Kodiak, 24 at Gulcana this afternoon. Uh, quite a range up here in the Tanana Valley. Mid 30s to lower 40s, I believe that's Nanana with 43. Otherwise, uh, 30 degrees over at Manly, 27 at Minchumina. McGrath came in at 30. And at the same time, Fort Yukon was at 21 degrees. Bettles in the upper 20s through the Koyukuk Valley, 16 at Anatuvik. <clears throat> and the Arctic coast a little chillier, but still above zero for the most part, although New Exit was at one degree while Atasuk at three. And at 31, that's uh, not right there for Point Lisburn. They're having a problem with their temperature sensor there. But these kind of things still slip through once in a while. Uh, teens to mid-20s from the northwest coastal areas and the uh, Kotzebue Sound, Selawak Valley, a little cooler back in toward uh, the Kobuk Valley. 30 degrees though at Nome, same thing at St. Michael. 37 at uh, Sleep Mute with uh, 40 there at Sparavon, 34 at Bethel, upper 20s along the coastline. And temperatures in the Bering Sea range from 23 up there across St. Lawrence Island to the mid to upper 30s for the Pribilofs, 40 degrees in on Alaska, lower 40s, Adak and Atka, chillier conditions, snow showers, 36 at Chimia, upper 30s for the Alaska Peninsula. And for the uh, lows tonight, after those mid 40s you saw this afternoon here, dropping back to 20 at King Sam and 18 at Dillingham. Otherwise, uh, mostly above freezing here, even for the Pribilofs, 17 though at uh, Savunga. Back into that uh, 10 to 20, possibly 25 below range there for the uh, northeast part of the state, as well as the north slope. Otherwise, uh, a little below zero down into the uh, mid Yukon, Cuscombe River Valley areas, and then above zero back down toward Bethel. And uh, lower 20s here to, or teens in the lower 20s for south central Alaska, and uh, 20s to mid 30s for the panhandle. Highs for tomorrow, much the same. Uh, up into the mid 40s there for the panhandle areas. Uh, could be a little bit cooler with uh, increasing wind conditions, pulling a little colder air uh, for in from the northeast there, but not a whole lot. Still rising well above freezing and uh, mid to upper 30s here across south central Alaska, back into the 30s to lower 40s here over the interior. Coldest up there from the Brooks Range up to the Arctic coast again and uh, holding near freezing for Nunavak Island and the Yukon Delta coast, but uh, may reach the mid 30s there for Norton Sound and the Golovin Nome areas, lower 40s, no change for the Aleutians. Flying weather, again, moisture possibly bringing marginal VFR conditions in across the southern southeast coast. Uh, during the day tomorrow with IFR probably staying off the coast there, and then that'll tend to retreat back uh, on Tuesday. 
VFR again from the Gulf of Alaska, Kodiak Island, all the way out uh, to the coastline there. Now extend northward up to the Arctic coast. This patch of uh, marginal VFR will probably stay off the coast and slide southeastward there and across Mackenzie Bay. But there will be an area of marginal VFR just uh, clipping the coastline here at times from Cape Newenham all the way along the coast there, possibly at times, especially in Nunavak Island, a little more vulnerable than, say, uh, Amonic will be, but uh, St. Lawrence Island, occasional marginal VFR, that'll be mostly on the south side, otherwise areas IFR out over the Aleutians. And for Anatovic, all these passes, once again, VFR. Adigan, ceilings, uh, pretty good, way up there, about 20,000 feet. Lake Clark and Merrill, VFR, rainy, ceilings, visibilities will be unlimited, as they will be for windy. And Isabel, VFR, Tanita, VFR, Portage, VFR. It's a hard thing to uh, repeat all the time, VFR, Chilkoot and White, VFR. Freezing levels tomorrow morning uh, near or north of the Pribloff Islands and cutting across Bristol Bay and again hugging the coastline, but 2,000 feet way down toward the Queen Charlotte's and south of the Alaska Peninsula. So looking at the icing chances, again, possibility of some light stuff here in areas, but uh, nothing significant at all. A little more significant, widespread out over the western and central Bering Sea, on down into the central Aleutians, mostly below 11,000 feet of the light to isolated, uh, very isolated moderate rime icing varieties, and also possibility with that moisture coming northward, just a chance that you might see uh, some icing below 10,000 feet here, uh, better chances than you will have in the north where there's no chance. And looking at the winds aloft, uh, high pressure centered up over the north slope there aloft, and jet stream heading northward out here to the west, keeping all that activity uh, out in that area and having it uh, just stall out and die along the coast. And then south east flow there well to the west of uh, our area. This branch of the jet right here, that's what's trying to nudge some moisture up into the southern southeast coast. 9,000 foot winds, uh, pretty brisk here across the Gulf of Alaska up to 30 knots and up to 30 knots as that thing lifts up toward the uh, southern southeast coast tomorrow. And then also a band of uh, winds here through the central interior, 20 to 30 knots. Quite variables, could see some 50 knotters out there over the central Aleutians, back to 25 knots and then pretty light here up to the north. And at uh, 3,000 feet again, this area of wind through the central interior, 30 to 35 knots. So due to that, I threw some turbulence in here cutting right through the central interior, but the heavier stuff will be from Nunavak Island across uh, St. Lawrence Island on up into the Chuck CC, as well as out over the western Aleutians, and occasional moderate chop with some gale force winds coming up to the southern southeast coast. And after the break, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. The December 26, 2004 earthquake and tsunami in Asia put these events on the map as never before. Tens of thousands perished without warning when waves swallowed entire communities along coastlines there. Oh my God, this is a tidal wave. In this era of video technology, suddenly the horror of tsunamis was front and center. The vastness of the tsunami's reach was staggering. As this National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration animation shows, that tsunami literally reached into every ocean basin on this planet. For many, it was an introduction to one of nature's most fearsome natural phenomena. But for American tsunami survivors, it offered a frightening flashback. Looking at that, I knew what the people were going through. And I, just as soon as I saw that water running up and people were running down to the beach when the water was draining away, they were going down and pick up the fish, you know. I said, man, get out of there as fast as you can. Cause that water's coming back, and boy, when it comes back, it really comes. Uh -huh. There's no escaping it. When I saw what happened in Thailand, I think it's the first time that I was ever really even emotional about it. I thought a lot about my dad, and I thought a lot about these families and what would happen to them, and just the utter um, destruction. And I also was hoping that they would find a way to rebuild their lives and realize that eventually their lives will improve. It's funny in a way that Alaska with such incredible beauty is a perfect place to come to understand tsunamis. But it makes sense since it's a state in which powerful natural forces are at work. 
Above ground, gargantuan temperature variations have produced mountains of snowfall over the eons, giving rise to the region's celebrated glaciers. But in large measure, tsunamis form because of what goes on below ground. Earthquakes set the stage. If we have an earthquake bigger than 7.0, we put down a tsunami warning. Guy Urban is a geophysicist with NOAA's West Coast and Alaska Tsunami Warning Center. A tsunami is a, is a, is a series of waves that's generated um, usually by, by a vertical displacement uh, caused by seismic activity. We can also produce tsunamis by landslides, either above or below the water. Uh, we can get tsunamis from volcanoes that either explode above or below the water. Mount St. Helens, uh, had that been near the water, that could have produced a tsunami. Also, um, we can produce tsunamis uh, from stuff from outer space, such as comets or meteors coming into the Earth. Urban and his colleagues are among a team of scientists charged with issuing formal warnings of tsunamis advancing on Alaska and the east and west coasts. He works out of this Palmer, Alaska facility, which sits in the shadows of snow-covered mountains north of Anchorage. First thing we tell people, if you feel an earthquake that lasts more than 30 seconds and get used to counting, uh, 1001, 1002, 1003, or one Mississippi, whichever way you do it. If it lasts more than 30 seconds and you're near the water, near the beach, uh, we recommend you head to high ground as quickly as possible. The data received here, and which allows them to forecast tsunamis, involve satellites and a network of ocean buoys and subsurface sensors. We have to have some way to confirm that there was a tsunami generated, and that's what our water level uh, data does whether it's deep ocean buoys or, or harbor type uh, tide gauges. And, and the third thing is we have to have a communication system in order to get that information out to the people that, that need it. And the fourth one, which is probably one of the most important one, is the people got to know what to do with it. Longtime Seward residents know what to do when tsunami warnings sound. The first things that came about was the civil defense sirens that were in town so that they could warn people if they had an alert. Here lately then we became a tsunami ready community, first one in Alaska. And that program was to uh, test how we brought in information, how we disseminated information, how we evacuated people. Waterfront signs clearly mark tsunami hazard zones, while other signs in town point the way to higher ground and to evacuation routes. Fire Chief David Squires remains vigilant but no signs may not be enough, especially for new residents and the thousands of visitors who make Seward a vacation destination. The older people have a very good idea, the older residents I should say, have a very good idea what happened in the last 64 earthquake. The newer people, one who just came to Seward, lived here only a year or two or, or four years, they're not quite aware of the power of the water. Only an hour after the deadly Sumatran earthquake and tsunami in Asia, December 26, 2004, scientists marveled as Alaska mountains, 7,000 miles away, began to rumble. That part of the story, when tsunamis on American shores, continues. Welcome back. Well, this is the uh, Bering Sea satellite image from yesterday which shows a lot of clear skies here across the St. Paul, St. George area. And the distance uh, between the two islands is about 40 miles or so. So you can see the ice edge right along here is, uh, oh, 60 or more miles off to the north and northeast of St. Paul. And you can see Nunavak right there. And the heavier ice flows up in this area, kind of extending back through here. And uh, again, uh, clear skies allowing us to see the ice edge all the way into Bristol Bay. For tomorrow, uh, look for some gales here along the south coast and gales continuing up here over the northern inside uh, water areas and the inner channels, small craft advisories likely as well at times. Uh, some areas will see less wind. Look for a gradual increase in these winds up here in the northern areas throughout the afternoon, 15 to 25 for the north coast. Then on Tuesday, uh, going with the uh, high wind warning, throw some storm force winds in there. Uh, for Lincoln Isle Glacier Bay, possibly down into Stevens Passage. Uh, otherwise, small craft advisory with higher gusts on down to the south. Less wind here along the central and south coast Tuesday over what you'll see tomorrow. And, uh, but all in the 20 to 25 knot range with uh, some higher gusts coming out of the bays. And for uh, the north Gulf Coast, light winds again. In fact, light variable winds for Prince William Sound and Cook Inlet. Uh, south of the Forelands here, northeast at about 10. 
and that light wind pattern all the way down through Shelikov Strait. Less wind here for Kodiak Island. Uh, today, uh, down towards Sitkanak, Akiak seeing, uh, well, just about gale force winds there. Uh, that'll come down to 15 knots. Light winds from the northeast extend all the way back up into the north. And for uh, Tuesday, lighter winds becoming more northwest across Kodiak. Northwest 20 here, southwest of uh, Kodiak. Mostly east or east southeast 15. Pretty light winds for Bristol Bay. And these light wind conditions continue. Just 10 knots here, Bristol Bay down along the Alaska Peninsula. On the Pacific side, northwest 15 to 20. For the Aleutians, uh, light winds for the Fox Islands. About the strongest we'll see here is those southerly 20 knot winds ahead of that weakening frontal system slipping its way eastward there tomorrow and then coming up to 25 knots in the colder air and more showery conditions back towards Chimia. But those will drop off the next day out there becoming quite light and light variable winds for the Fox Islands uh, for Tuesday. For the uh, southwest coast, uh, 15 knots southeasterlies here right up across St. Lawrence Island, light westerlies for the Perbolofs. And for Tuesday, southwest coming up to 25 for the Perbolofs, otherwise staying quite light, but notice now it's west-southwest wind flow across the entire area. Arctic coast uh, for tomorrow, light winds from the east, uh, 10 to 15 knots, very light here on the west side. And then it looks like on Tuesday, these winds will begin to pick up here, possibly as high as 20 knots there on the eastern coast, but uh, staying light here to the west. And moving along to the uh, forecast for tonight, uh, clear skies, no change overall in the interior. Increasing chance of rain or rain or snow, depending on your elevation, mostly over the extreme south part of the panhandle. No change out here over the Bering Sea. A couple of fronts just weakening, kind of merging to one here. And actually, that precipitation field looks a little more ominous than it will be. No change over the interior from the Gulf of Alaska to the Arctic coast. Same weather, increasing winds over the northern panhandle. Again, a high wind warning starts tomorrow at 4 p.m. and lasts at least for 24 hours there with the strongest winds likely Tuesday morning as high as 80 miles an hour. Well, have a great evening and thanks for joining us. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. You can tell a lot about a company by where it invests. At ConocoPhillips, we're investing in Arctic science and engineering at the University of Alaska Anchorage. And we're supporting today's students and tomorrow's engineers at UAF. In fact, today, more than 100 of our employees are University of Alaska graduates, and our future is in their hands. We happen to think that's a pretty good investment. ConocoPhillips, Alaska's oil and gas company.